Monster Game Night is a dark comedy actual play podcast that contains personal and political horror. This show is not appropriate for children, and adults can find content warnings in our episode descriptions. Welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, Bluegrass by Night, where our baleful storyteller sends our band of offbeat vampires on a dangerous road trip to destroy the wards protecting the fictional Jamestown. I am Nick, and I play Jason, the ward slashing Bantu Akeem. I am Russell, and I play Gordon. The Invoker of the Holy Flame. Hi, I'm Josh, and I play Clear Visions, the Sightless Toreador. This is Ben, playing Tommaso, the Dashing Putinesca. Hey, I'm Mike, and I play your somewhat sarcastic storyteller. Why doesn't our Coterie recap what happened last time on Monster Game Night? Ooh, tomato, tomato, tomato. Tomato, we don't like Mike. Tomato. (laughs) (laughs) So the four of us finally decided it was time to get the fuck out of this podunk place. Tried to let Suzanne know. Very flippant response that I'm not going to forget. Jason went to scout the riverside, noticing several unexpected guests before cutting open the ward. We crossed that river, but uh, it wasn't so successful for the werewolves on the other side. And I went blind. And I decided to finally pull the pin on the holy hand grenade and cooked the hell out of Sniffs in the Wind. I guess he's more like Ashes in the Wind. Dude, that's not his name. <laughs> gave him a new name. I know, I gave him a new name. It's a new name. It's a it's, beautiful it's, thing. Yeah, it's Ashes in the Wind. Sniffs the exhaust. Looks like those fumes blew up. Uh. <laughs> to set the scene, tonight's session opens moments after Gordon unleashed Holy Ragnarok Upon the tribe of Bonar Lupines led by Sniffs the Exhaust, we're standing on the banks of the Wildcat River. The night sky is clear. We can see stars sparkling overhead, hear crickets in the background. And against this pleasant scene, we see muzzle flashes of rifles in the distance, and we hear the report of gunshots being fired upon our coterie of miscreants as they flee the latest scene of destruction. What do you wish to do? As the ashes are falling into the river, Gordon just just turns his back and starts walking to the van or the bus very calmly in that direction jason grabs clear vision's hand and we got to get out of here right now come on let's go 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 of course uh, i know where we're going but lead the way i've been sprinting i don't know what you're talking about i need tomaso to give me a roll of wits plus awareness Yay. why am i mildly surprised we didn't have to roll for fucking frenzy for seeing fire <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. First I mean, of all, it's I, not too late. Shut first of up. all, I didn't see it, so no frenzy <laughs> check here. Yeah. But it's also holy fire. That's probably worse. Do I get my instincts bonus on you? Yes, you get to add your instincts bonus. I want to remind our listeners that last week, Gordon and Tommaso attempted to search this side of the river and arrived with some confidence at the conclusion that there was no one on this side, and yet Sniffs the Exhaust was laughing. As he walked off. That's four successes. Four successes. You know what? I'm going to willpower that. I think that's a very wise decision. Here it goes. God, I swear to God, I thought someone was knocking on the door. (laughs) Five. Five successes. You spent willpower to get one more success. One one, one out of three chance. (laughs) Worth. That's just how it goes sometimes. Yep. Does Tomasho, he's running. He's sprinting right now. Oh, yeah. So Tommaso dashing forward, spraying water off of him as he's waded across the Wildcat River, suddenly skids to a halt. Looking forward, he notices that somebody has placed a thin silver strand tripwire across the road in front of him. They cast the alarm spell. (laughs) (laughs) They activated the alarm discipline, sir. Let's get this right. (laughs) Hmm. All right. Is anybody else near me right now or am I ahead of everybody else? I think you are a few moments ahead of everybody else. I would probably be ahead if I wasn't dragging someone. I have a bum leg. (laughs) He might eat some leaves on the way. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I I yell out, hold. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to make a shot at trying to disarm it. Interesting. Give me a roll of dexterity. Manipulation. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Extra. That's not the right thing. Dexterity craft. Nice. <laughs> You're good at that, right? <laughs> good roll. No one has any craft. <laughs> Nothing. <sighs> As Tommaso stretches his hands out to attempt to disarm this tripwire, he realizes that forcing it to maintain tension is going to be extremely challenging and it's going to take dexterous manipulation of this wire. I think I'm going to back off from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would it take to just step over it gently? Absolutely nothing. But your coterie mates, specifically those who are dragging someone and the one who said they put on sunglasses and are walking, maybe in a lot of peril. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. It was worth it for the vibe. <laughs> it absolutely was. It was actually to save my eyes from the flash of the fire. Got to think about the night vision. Yeah, this there. was a big brain move. Yeah, really. this was a big brain move. <laughs> All right. Protect so the night I, vision. <laughs> I will slowly step over it instead and i'm gonna yell out all right slow down motherfuckers we got a problem slow it i need tomaso to make one more roll of wits plus awareness it's for me there's more claymores <laughs> I, i'm just so i'm just picturing we're running you stop you turn around you say hey slow down and then you just get fucking domed <laughs> by a sniper <laughs> Might work, but let's see. <laughs> oh, that's a crit. Yeah, I crit. Nine successes. Holy fuck. Jesus. Is any portion of that crit on a hunger die? Yes. <laughs> Praise Lilith. <laughs> so we have a messy critical here. Yeah. Oh, this is good. This is very, <laughs> very. The messy part very is Tommaso just being a bloody spot on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it can't be that, that messy. I'm pretty damn tough, okay? That takes away the wind from the critical, so I can't do that. Yes. Tommaso lifts his foot over top of the first tripwire. <clears throat> he realizes as he begins to place it, there is a second tripwire placed almost exactly a stride length away from it intended to capture the unwary person who saw the first one but assumed there wouldn't be a second. Looking beyond that though, there are three men in tree perches with rifles pointed directly at Tommaso prepared to murder the survivors of this. Now, the messy part of this critical is that Tommaso, he's fucking pissed. This isn't fighting fair. This isn't cool. You don't do this to people. He doesn't even gather himself. He doesn't even aim. He draws his desert eagle and he just starts wailing rounds towards these three men. Willy nilly, absolutely no dexterity or craft behind them. That sounds pretty bad. You think you three are cute? Eat lead. I say that we uh, send CV up to <laughs> act as a shield for Tommaso. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's move. <laughs> hey, Tommaso, what you see up there, man? What you shooting at? What do you think I'm shooting at? I, I, that's why I'm asking. God. I come to a halt holding CV back with an arm. Whoa, we got some action here. Seeing Tommaso pulling a pistol out and wantonly like firing at free. Fucking blasting that. Man, I love wontons. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, I'm going, Gordon is going to stealth and attempt to sneak up to the tree. Okay. So Gordon's intention is to sneak up on one of the men who has taken up a tree perch and do something with him at some point. Correct. Do some things. I figure that that's going to take longer than one round. Yes. I am also going to attempt to sneak around the other direction. So what are you doing with clear visions? So I'm leaving them right there. <laughs> Stay here. Stay here. Keep your head down. Clear visions will like duck into like a bush or something. And then how are you going to see a bush? I presume, we're like in the woods, right? You yeah, you are running yeah. through. <laughs> yeah. So, so you just see clear visions. What he like... doesn't see is the uh, fire ant hill that he's standing yeah. on. <laughs> the hornet's nest that has jumped into. They can and recover that damage. It's fine. I'm going to call out to Teresa. Hey, help. Me and send Caw, her in. Caw. You hear Teresa, you can hear her feathers fluttering on the wind as she flies overhead to obey your instruction. Okay, so from each of you, I need some dice rolls. I need Gordon to give me a roll of dexterity plus stealth, his very favorite roll of all time. No hunger dice. Tommaso, you initiated this round, so no roll from you yet. Okay. Jason, I also need dexterity plus stealth. Clear visions, you are going to be at a slight disadvantage. I want you to remove one die from your pool for this. This is going to be your charisma plus animal ken. Minus one die because you're using one action to find a bush to hide in. Or you can choose not to find the bush to hide in. If yeah, you I'm just not going to find the bush. Okay. <laughs> just assume yeah, I'm just going like, to lay flat on the ground. <laughs> Which <laughs> face down or face up to elaborate on this image, Ass Clear up. Visions is wearing a yellow Speedo. He has oh, a yes. towel wrapped around his shoulders. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Shower <laughs> shoes upon his feet. And so we see this elderly man with majestic curled mustache drop to his knees and lay flat, putting his hands upon his head. One more suggestion of a purple shower cap, please. <laughs> Uh, yes, always. <laughs> no, it, it needs to be yellow to match the speedo. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's always no, gonna it's, match. It's no, it's funnier that it doesn't match. It's, it's pure white, of course. It, that's his aesthetic. Yeah. Okay, I'll go with that. Um, the speedo was yellow. That's what I remember. Yes, it okay. was. Okay. 
Good. As always, you're welcome to take half if you don't want to risk a messy critical or a bestial failure. I mean, I can't get a bestial failure nor a messy critical. Gordon cannot. How do you have nine dice in this? Because I got a shit ton. <laughs> I mean, I have four in charisma, oh, two okay. in animal kin. I rouse the blood, especially in birds. I'm going to willpower. Oh, God. No, Jock. <laughs> That'll be six success. We see Teresa, sandy pink feathers flapping in the starlight, bows her head towards Clear Visions, launches herself into the sky, and flits towards Tommaso. We see her extend her wings and her talons. A mighty sight. I'm also going willpower. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, look, once you go beyond like 20 successes, I can't do more with it. Now we're going to leave you for last. (laughs) While you're counting. Jason. I have eight successes and that is a messy critical. That's a messy critical. So Jason's intention was to sneak up and position himself to quietly eliminate one of his opponents, right? With my sword, correct. With his sword. He ends up chopping the tree down. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't have a dice roll in there for swinging the sword. It's either too much or not enough, and there's no middle ground. So I think that instead, what is going to happen is that Jason is kind of a calm, contemplative guy. He's got a sense for artwork and for beauty around him. He likes to spend time reading and meditating. Jason slithers into the darkness and suddenly he disappears. The shadows absorb him as though he is one of their own. He approaches and he climbs up the tree stand right behind one of the riflemen, but suddenly he finds himself afflicted with doubt. Is this the way? And that doubt stays his hand for one round. All right, Gordon. <laughs> Mr. Fletcher. Have you finished that to, up? Hey, yeah, anyone want to the over under on what I got? Real fast. I've seen it. I, I'm not well, saying anything. I'm I'm going to go with 14. Wow. Right in the middle of you two. 13 successes. 13 successes. A measly 13. A uh, measly that's, 13. That's, I did crit. That's kindergarten bullshit. And cr- crits are just four, right? We, yes. we, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that'd be 13. By the way, he will powered to get from 11 to 13. <laughs> So in Vampire the Masquerade, 13 is an unlucky number. Oh. So we actually invert it. So you Damn actually it. rolled a negative three. So we totally Wait, failed. wait, how does that invert? He's, he's <laughs> dropping more Teen <laughs> Phoenix on us. It's negative three over one. It's just what? how it works. How does that work out? You know, I don't make the rules. I just okay. read them. All right, cool. So <laughs> brain hurts. 13 successes. Mm-hmm. What would be the most perfect outcome of this for Gordon? You have three men in tree stands with rifles, IR night vision scopes. He knows knows everything about them that can possibly be known and he can position himself to eliminate them in the most efficient way possible. I got, I got it. I got it. He uses one to take out. <laughs> That's pretty good. He basically goes like, vroom, vroom, and he shoots. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do that. All right, so tell me how you're doing that. Can you tell me, the like, are they, like, spread out in, like, a semicircle? Like, how are they spread out? They're in a very, very You nice... got 13 successes, man. You tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I So, in my mind, I believe that they're staggered, okay? And if so, the farthest one back, Gordon's just going to take a stick, and he's going to nudge as he shoots the gun over onto the other <laughs> guy. That's all it's going to be. That's all it is. Actually, no, I I have a better one. Okay. This is going to require a rouse check more than likely. Since I have 13 successes, okay, I'm willing to make even two rouse checks for this. Actually, it'll have to be two. I would like to position myself immediately in the center and activate uh, shadow cast so that it touches both of them. I'm going to immobilize both of them. They can't move at all with touch of oblivion, which so, is a lot to do. I I, I, I get that. That is um, that is stretching the rules really far. I play fast and loose with some of the rules, especially where oblivion is concerned, because I like three round combat to stay yeah. three rounds. That is going to take your entire turn. Setting this up will take your entire turn. You can activate one discipline this turn and turn. then activate the next, the next. So on your next turn, this will happen. That's fine. But as long as I still get... So basically what I'm going for is that they don't see the shadow cast as the shadows creep upon them. Oh, definitely not. Gordon twists them around the tree in the moonlight, tracing where the branches trap the moonlight and cast I, a line. I do fail my rouse check, so I do get hungrier, but I'm at one hunger. Finally. You're yeah. at one hunger. Finally. Welcome. So that is your so hunger the, for this round. So the shadows goes. deepen and Gordon feels himself taking control of them, clenching his fist around the dark path 
patches where no moonlight has entered. He doesn't clench his fist when he does it. He clenches his butt. God damn it! <laughs> no, he does Kegel exercises, and the the shadows just Goodness. flow out of him. <laughs> so the oh, he's on that pulse like his Kegel. <laughs> <laughs> he's on that like a uh, red woman shit right there. <laughs> Shadows pulsing out. Yeah, it's a dated reference. Live with it. <laughs> Can't even say anything. It's our second Game of Thrones reference this episode. <laughs> you know, yep. we don't have to make as many. I'm just going to say that Gwyneth Paltrow probably sells a candle that smells like that. Oh, absolutely. True. I Okay. And just remember, what is dead may never die. Ooh. That's how we got Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, please don't sue us. We are sorry for defaming your name. We're this bigger than you. This is a personal you. attack. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> Tommaso and Clear Visions. Yes. Hello. Tommaso, you've drawn your gun. You're firing wildly, but you're fortunate because the one nearest to you in the order, Teresa, sweeps in, wings spread wide, talons askew, and you see her talons catch this man as he's laid flat, rifle presented towards you, catches him along the eyes and scalp. You think the barrel may be pulled wide, but you are trading gunfire with him. Plus two damage value with those <laughs> clear visions. You're pretty pale. You're wearing yellow speedo. You're wearing a yellow speedo. You're very easy to see right now. There's a long moment as two of the riflemen see their targets disappear. <laughs> And one of them lay on the ground. And one of them <laughs> lay flat, ass cheeks glimmering in the moonlight. <laughs> oh, please. Let's let's just call it what it is. It's a reflection of the moonlight off his ass cheeks. <laughs> full moon over Jamestown. There are two full moons over Jamestown tonight, boys. <laughs> now, I feel really bad doing this to you, but you told me you used your full action to send Teresa, which means that you don't get to defend against this. Yeah, that's how animalism works. There's a burst. What a we hear two reports of gunfire erupt from two of the men near the back that Teresa has not yet distracted, and two high-powered rifle rounds strike clear visions through the chest, each of them dealing two points of superficial damage that is after being half. I was going to say do it right through both of his sciatica, but... <laughs> <laughs> One of them does give him a second asshole. No. Okay. Help! Help! I've been shot! Help! <laughs> Isn't that like the second time you've done that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I got shot. <laughs> oh, I'm not in good shape. Okay. Tomaso. Guess you'll duck next time. No, she's a crane. <laughs> <laughs> I was right there with you on that one. <laughs> My clip runs out and I just go, motherfucker. And then I just try to like get myself out of the tripwire trap, basically, because I know I need to get closer. After throwing his gun. <laughs> no, I'm not throwing that. That's my baby. <laughs> Tommaso, with his instincts, recognizes that choosing not to return fire will give the lead rifleman okay. time to focus on him. And he is more likely to be struck. But you can do that. I have a question. How far can you throw a body? I mean, I got four strengths, so pretty far. Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah, with that, I will stay in place and roll composure firearms. All right. Give me just a sec to get that together. We are entering into our third and final round of this combat. Isn't this the second round of the combat? I'm kind of treating what... Tommaso did as the... As round one. That's fair, yeah. Clear Visions, what is your intention? <laughs> I'm taking an all-out defense. A wise oh, choice. God! And by that, I mean I'm rolling around on the ground avoiding <laughs> gunfire. <laughs> Jason, I'm pretty sure I know what you're doing, but why don't you tell me? Uh, I am sneaking up behind this guy and attempt a piercing thrust through the spine in the back of the neck. So this is melee combat. So that is going to be wits plus melee. Or sorry, that is... Uh, dexterity melee, Dexterity right? melee is the... That's the de facto role for that. That's given in the rules. So that's dexterity melee. And Mr. Fletcher, you are completing... You're going to make another rouse check to activate Touch of Oblivion, and then you are going to make a roll to attack. I don't have to make a roll to attack with Touch of Oblivion. They don't see it coming. God damn it. <laughs> That's why I make you roll to use a cell phone, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tommaso, you are exchanging gunfire with the lead rifleman. What is your result? I burned a willpower 
and I ended up with four successes. Four successes. Tommaso is quick. He's had decades to train. He was embraced during the Sabbat invasion of the East Coast. He recognizes when the barrel of a gun is pointed at him, and he knows just fucking pull the trigger and go. But Tommaso can back it up. He's ready for this. His round lands directly on the face of the man who pointed the rifle. Did you add your damage value? Add two. Add two dice. Add two dice to your roll for Teresa's assistance and add two to your margin of success for the damage that you deal. Yes. So that's a total of six successes. Is that with the plus two from? Yes. Okay. Tommaso is ready and prepared. He is out distance and outclassed by this weapon, but it doesn't matter. Tommaso can fucking handle this. His round penetrates straight through the eyelid of the lead rifleman and the man goes dead. So we're going to resolve Jason's dice pool next. Does my target get immobilized before or after I kill him? (laughs) It's a great question, isn't it? I guess we should resolve Gordon first. Okay, so Gordon stretches out with his touch of oblivion. We see shadowy tentacles wrapping their way up the tree trunks where these men have placed themselves and begin to stretch towards them. Yep. Uh, I don't get hungrier, and the hand just touches them and mobilizes them, dealing three aggravated damage. Three aggravated? Holy shit. Hell yes. Fuck. Because it's two for touch of oblivion plus a plus one for shadow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This guy does not stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> we see shadowy tentacles wrap their way around the necks of the two men, jerking them away from the scopes of their rifles, pulling their heads back. We hear a sickening crack as their necks twist. Oh, good. Now he's looking at me. <laughs> He just Jason, sees what's coming. Prepared with his sword thrust, sees his opponent immobilized. Does this give me bonus die? I don't think you need bonus <laughs> die for this. I know I don't, but I'm still asking. <laughs> yes, add two to your dice pool. <laughs> Because you have an opponent who is literally captured by the neck. <laughs> for the record, this is 13 dice. <laughs> Would you like to take half? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Do it. I'm not going to decapitate this mother. Be sure to uh, pop a willpower if you want more. <laughs> that is a lot of sixes. Holy shit. Six, 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 six. Extra mark. <laughs> First of all, that's the mark of the Jason. I'm It'll disappointed see. there's no crits. That's only nine successes. Oh, that is mere, super disappointing. A mere nine successes. <laughs> oh. So you tell us, Jason has this man totally at his mercy. What's he going to do with him? (laughs) I was going to say, give him a nice low haircut. Mm. (laughs) We're going to trim that neckline. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) I was going to go for a piercing thrust, but once I saw the head twist back towards me, I'm just (laughs) going to flash (laughs) Slashing blow and just clean cut his head off. (laughs) Jason stretches out with his silver sword, slashes strong from the shoulder, high right to his left. We see a diagonal cut and the man's head looks shocked for a moment as it is removed from his shoulders and it tumbles to the ground. Our third rifleman is restrained by the neck, a tentacle of shadow suspending him like a hangman's noose down from the branch. This fight is clearly resolved with clear visions being shot twice so i'm going to take the guy that's hanging from his neck i'm going to drag him over to clear visions and say i got you some food i toss the guy over to him we hear the rustle of leaves as a body is drug along behind mr fletcher we hear it shoved forward and hear it land on the foliage right next to clear visions are we safe to assume at this point that these were mortal men you are safe to assume that at this point okay hey, considering that they died pretty yeah. easily yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, Can I drink from the squirting neck like a water? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Yes, you may. Jason crouches down, lifts the decapitated man by the shoulders, and as the heart beats its last few moments, pushes its lifeblood straight down his neck. Jason recovers one hunger. <laughs> Hold on, cheesy horror movie. (laughs) Hey, this isn't supposed to be a good podcast. No. We're supposed to be funny. Uh, Clear Visions rolls away from the thing that was thrown at him (laughs) and screams. (laughs) Gordon grabs Clear and says, stop screaming. There is food right next to you. Eat it and heal yourself. Oh, gladly. I wish you would have told me. I did. And he 
opens his mouth and just gnashes in every direction until he hits the body. <laughs> <laughs> so we see an elderly man in a yellow speedo, now with leaves and mud kind of sticking to him a little bit, towel wrapped or tied around his neck, kind of flapping a little bit. Like a cape. <laughs> <laughs> White swim cap. Knocked askew coming off of his beautiful, luscious mane of hair, thrashing around in the leaves. Eventually, Teresa takes pity on him and directs him oh. to the body. I was going to say, Gordon will tear the white cap off, grab him by the hair, and just shove his face into the body. That happens too. Meanwhile, Tomas is just <laughs> Thank by Thank you, himself. Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Tomas is just by himself, stepping gingerly among the tripwires, mumbling, Yet, get motherfuckers for not playing fair. I'll shoot you all again if I have to. <laughs> hey, Tomasa, what you saying over there, bud? Shut up. Good job, Tommy. Clear is drinking as much as he can, as fast as he can. So, with no regards towards anything. This man is going to die, I assume. He's not dead yet. Probably. I'm not dead yet. I so. mean, he's had pretty <laughs> aggravated damage and. He's close to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then I'll just I'll drain him. Out. All right. Clear Visions takes a mortal life. He falls to zero hunger. I think. Ah, that's that good stuff. I love it. Thank you. That good stain stuff. I'm still blind, but. I can't do anything about that. Eh, yeah, I know. But do I got. Can you just make sure I'm cleaned up? <laughs> Use this towel. Gordon takes the towel and he just takes and rubs it all over Clear Vision's face. So it's just covered in blood. <laughs> You're cleaned up. Perfect. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. I'm screen worthy now. Yep. You're screen worthy. All I right. I look like I should be on swim fan. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then once uh, Clear is done, he's going to pick him up and lead him around the tripwire that Tommy is gingerly like dodging and off to the bus. Very well. And I go, I see you uh, join the congregation tonight. I don't know what you're talking about. I look good. Well, we had a holy hand grenade and now you're holy. Obviously, we have a congregation now. <laughs> no. Tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> Too aggravated willpower damage. Good we begin God. to hear the sirens of the Jamestown police responding to the three, explo four explosions that were unleashed by this coterie upon the banks of the Wildcat River, the gunfire that has been exchanged, and presumably... There are still kinfolk of Sniffs the Exhaust's pack left out there on the rooftop of Ridley's. Are they still firing at us? Not anymore. You guys have moved far enough onward that they can't reach you at this point. Perfect. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to rouse the blood to heal. That's a good call. I do not get hungrier and I'm going to do it again. The four of you, some of hungry, you yeah. slightly wounded, but healing as you advance. We see clear visions, limping slightly, having been shot. Oh, by the time I make it to the bus, I've already brushed off the superficial wounds. I'm good. We see a clear visions swagger as he approaches his tour bus. The blind swagger. So he walks right into the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thump <laughs> as we arrive at the purple Clear Visions tour bus. The Clear Visions tour bus is a luxury, luxury tour bus. It is the Clear Visions tour bus is painted purple with the name Clear Visions written in soft pastel yellow lettering along the side. Clear Visions face made up perfectly impeccable, removed of all blemishes, is plastered upon the side of it. And Clear Visions with his face twisted to the side as his cheek has been mashed up against the edge of it. He leaves face a face. He, he leaves a big <laughs> bloody face print next to him. <laughs> I, I say... Hey, Rosetta. Wait, it's not Rosetta, right? She's Rosetta. on the bus. A moment passes. The headlights and the interior lights of the tour bus turn on. You can see that Rosetta's SUV has been hitched to the back of it, being towed. The door to the tour bus opens. The tour bus's windows are very darkly tinted. It's very difficult to see the inside of it. This is intentional to block out the noonday sun if clear vision should need to overday in an inconvenient location. Hey, Rosetta, I need some help. Uh, this genius was uh, blinded by his own success. You see a shadow being cast from the interior lighting. We see the form of Rosetta leaning heavily against the hand railing that leads down the bus's steps. As she steps down, we see the form of Rosetta, curly hair, carefully tailored business suit, limping a little bit along the leaf-covered dirt 
towards the coterie and she says, which genius? The one I'm helping. Oh, Mr. Visions, what's wrong with your eyes? Hi, Rosetta. I got him dilated at the doctor. I'll be fine. I'm just taking a night off. Yeah, he decided to look into the flash of a nuclear bomb. I wish I could say that's what happened. Rosetta places her hands around Clear Vision's waist. You can feel her supporting him, even though she's a little bit, even though she is very much under the weather right now and not at full strength. She's still doing everything she can to support and lead Clear Visions back to his tour bus. Thank you, Rosetta. This is just thank you. I'm so sorry that I wasn't there to help. And she leads Clear Visions back onto the bus. She places his hand onto the railing and helps lift his foot onto the first step and the second step and the third, and then enters on to the well-appointed conversation pit bearing tour bus and leads him to a comfortable couch and places him into a seat. Thank you. I'll be I'll be fine here. Um, How Can we just hit the road? Will it be long before you can see again? Can you see right now? I'll be fine tomorrow. I think that's fair to say. From the back of the bus, Clear Visions hears the voice of Suzanne Giovanni says, hey, what's wrong with his face? Now, Rosetta, I'm going to need you to cover your ears, okay? Are they are they covered? You got your earmuffs on? Okay. Yes, Mr. Visions. Thanks. Okay. Now, listen here, you young lady. You should know this when you, uh, this just isn't fair. You know, I didn't talk shit to you when we were in your lab. I could have burned that whole bitch to the ground. Yeah, but you didn't. I have a flamethrower on this bus somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to find it. <laughs> the rest of the coterie makes their way on board the bus and they are greeted by the sight of Clear Visions and Suzanne Giovanni engaged in this verbal sparring with each other. They see that behind her is the shaved head of Jerry Carl, the doctoral Ochem student who she has been leading along at some points, keeping very quiet to himself. We also see the long-haired, heavy-set form of Timmy, Clear Vision's one-time chief production assistant, taking a seat and keeping to himself. Rosetta is in the bus driver's seat. Suzanne is in the very back. We see a very large black chest next to her. Jerry's face is very flushed. He is sweating as though he's walked very far carrying something very, very, very heavy. Hey, Rosetta, who told you to let this woman on? Yeah, nice to see you're capable of hitching rides, Miss Take Care of Yourself. She's family. I couldn't tell her no. I know, I know. I'm not mad at you. You could have very easily told her no. Tommy, you called it me and told me no. to get on the bus. I didn't tell you to get on the bus. Well, you told me it was time to leave. You now that we're on a... the bus, can we go? Yeah, actually, you know what? We can deal with this later. Let's get out of here. There's a hiss and a click as the bus door closes. Rosetta, we hear the crank of an engine as Rosetta turns the key. The bus comes to life. She begins to drive forward. We feel a slight sway as the bus begins to roll. Suzanne says, well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I'm sure it was great for you. And Tommy walks to the back and he sits right down on the trunk. Yeah, I know what's in here and I don't care right now. What do you think is in there? What are we talking about? If we're talking <laughs> about my bedroom, she better not be in there. <laughs> she oh, is I'm clear. in your bedroom. Where's his bedroom? She She's in there. She's getting into that drawer with all that naughty stuff. My letters? Yeah. There's no time for this, Rosetta. Drive. What do you I'm mean there's driving. no time for this? We have clearly... Where are we even going? I, I need to go to a dry cleaner to get this smell of burnt fur off my clothes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oxford. We're going to Oxford. Let's go. Nearest location. Oxford? Okay. Do we even have any clue what we're looking for? Do you have any idea what these things look like? I've got this symbol right here. Okay, listen. You deal with that. I'm probably going to be needing to give a status update soon because I imagine my phone's about to stop blowing up. So why wasn't your phone blowing up when we were in Jamestown? It's because I turned it off. OK, so why not just leave it off then? Trust me, they're going to find me now that we're out of there. Yeah, they're really going to want to hear from you, Tommy. Thanks. I had no idea. Yeah. You know, when, the, when all this, when all these explosions kind of happen somewhere, that's a good time to start thinking about how you're going to spin that story. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, you know, when you're a star, they burn. They burn bright. Gotta learn this being in the CV crew. You look like... As he says, looking in a random direction. <laughs> <laughs> look, okay, the explosions were not our fault. They, there was a biker gang there, and they got into it with another biker gang, and that's what caused it. We just went on our merry way. See, we're lucky we got out of there. We could have been attacked by bikers, too. Yeah. I didn't even know they were there. Super... <laughs> 
<laughs> super scary. And Tommy? Suzanne looks around and says, well, it's lucky I'm here because you're clearly incompetent. You obviously needed me to come with you, so it's a good thing that I'm here. How Are, the hell do you think we're incompetent? Well, you just said that you led two biker gangs blow up half of the city, so obviously Why would we care help. if biker gangs blew up the city? That's not on us. Let's get a couple facts straight, okay? Kind of a win-win. I know. We were outside of that dump you were hanging out Right? In. The bus left hours before all this happened. Yeah. I'll be sure to tell everyone that. I'm sure they'll totally believe that just the night you happened to leave, but that's okay. Hey, can it. I'll handle hey, it. Hey, I'm here to help you, and that's the important thing, is I'm here for you, Tommy. It sounds like you're here because you're a little bitch who needed a ride. No. Oh. All right. Tell him. All right. Settle it down right now. We've Everybody. got we, we've got like 30 minutes of this, dude. I'm aware of that. And We're I, doing it in real time, baby. 30 minutes <laughs> arguing. <Go. laughs> As we hit a pile. <laughs> <laughs> These damn roads, I swear. So clear, tell me, is it true what they say about blind people? That I have enhanced hearing, which I do, and I activate or my all specs. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they enhance hearing and enhance smell. Do they? Do you? I always do. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then obviously making you blind didn't help with anything. Did it at least help your precog? I could see the future. If that's what you're asking. Well, yeah. What do you want to know? I want to know when Suzanne's going to bite the dust over here. Well, and you see, and he, he waves his hands around and then he points in a direction that he thinks that she's in, and says, I foresee your death at the hands of a black raven holding a large hook. I have foreseen this, the fates have foretold. Not a woman young, but a woman old will kill you. Oh, for fuck's sake, with that... Tommy grabs a blood bag. Manipulation plus subterfuge. And Tommy says, oh, for fuck's sake. And he just grabs a blood bag and he heads to the back of the bus. Can I help with this? I have impeccable lies to help sell this. No, because you, I don't, I think this is a very clear visions moment. I don't think you can be to help with this. Yeah. Let him sit back. Zero success. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you get for trying to get cute. (laughs) He's already blind. What cow can you do? Suzanne Suzanne stands up. Clear Visions doesn't see the look that she throws at him, but rest assured, it is not just dirty. It is mocking and laughing. And she says, I know you don't see shit, old man. Come on. You don't scare me. I'm fine. I already know how I die anyway, because I already did it. I'm already dead. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) There's a... You've been told. A cat mouths across the void and we hear it echo. (laughs) I think it's interesting that you've You're okay with your own death. It might be sooner than you think. You know, we get an extra opportunity to die twice. Tommy and I have learned to accept this. Hey, speak for yourself. (laughs) As you slam that (laughs) go-gurt that you're drinking. (laughs) A few moments pass along the drive. Is anyone using this drive to do anything productive or story relevant? I mean, I just healed, but... I'm just waiting till the scene's over. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. the scene's over. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I think I turned, I sit down next to Jerry and I go, So, long night. Wait, Jerry doesn't know we're vampires. Yeah, he does. He does. I mean, not, he didn't before. He no, does it, Jerry's not the production assistant. Is Timmy, though. No. That's Timmy. Jerry's the guy that I uh, lingered charmed on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm thinking of Timmy. My bad. Okay, let me let me wreck on that. I'll sit down next to Timmy while I'm sucking down a blood pack. And go. <laughs> so, long night, kid. Timmy very pointedly does not make eye contact with Tommaso. He is staring out the window as timidly as he can possibly be. He's a large man, broad, not necessarily fit, but still big enough. And he has pulled his shoulders close together in on himself. And he's looking out the window very, very shy. Yeah, I didn't know that this is what working for was going to entail. I I had business cards and that was really cool. And then someone, where's Hannah? Um, she just decided not to join us. Why did, why did she get a choice? (laughs) Yes, HR leader, please tell us. (laughs) I'm not HR, I'm the production, I'm the Uh, executive producer. You're the one dealing with all the human. (laughs) Human guests. Trust me, kid, there'll be a better explanation later just to lay back and think about things for now. Okay, I I know you got some things to process at the moment. Where are we going? You heard me. We're going to Oxford. Are we supposed to record there? Maybe we'll see. Can I call my parents? No. Hey, Tommy, did you give him? Wait, 
Did you sign an NDA yet? Yes. Good boy. If I even see you make a move toward that phone, it's getting broken. You understand me? You talking about the phone or the hand? What? I'll let him think about that. Timmy's hand reflexively jerks towards his pocket. And then as Tommaso says, You even make one move toward that phone. It's getting broken. You understand? His hand stops and retracts and comes back into his lap, clasped timidly. Maybe you're cut out for this job after all. A short while passes, nowhere near the length of time that is required to drive to Oxford from Jamestown. We hear the intercom crackle to life, and the voice of the bus driver, Rosetta, comes over and she says, Uh, sir? I think I see a roadblock ahead. And that is a wonderful moment for us to end this episode. Your boy's got his eyes back. (laughs) Hey guys, we're Monster Game Night. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm Mike, your storyteller, and I am joined at the table by Ben playing Tommaso, Russell playing Gordon, Josh playing Clear Visions, and Nick playing Jason. Tune in next week. We release an episode every Monday. Also follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher. We'd love to hear from you on social media. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit at Monster Game Night. Also, please give us a rating, write a review, and tell your friends and family about the show if you enjoyed it. Word of mouth is the best way for a small independent show like ours to grow. Hope that you can come to our next Monster Game Night. Bam. Good shit.